Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Got a special guest from BWT in Italy, Sergio Barbarizzi with me, and we want to talk about some of the BWT solutions for filtering water for an espresso machine. Yep. Really important stuff. And I know BWT has a patented magnesium ion exchange uh, that they use for theirs. Well, I'm going to talk about you know what some of the other options are, why, why maybe the magnesium uh, ion exchange is a better way to go, right? So mm -hmm. traditionally, you know, what was done to protect espresso machines? You know, if you go back 20 years. Uh, it's tw more than 20 more years. Than 20? More than 20 years, because <laughs> it's a long story that I try to make short for you. Mm -hmm. um, as long as machines existed, the soft, the word soft thing has always existed. Yeah. So the, 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 two, um, the two machine and software uh, from the day that they invented the espresso coffee machine, they always went together. Yes. Um, softening is basically the exchange of calcium with the ion sodium. So we, uh, in a softener, we take out the calcium of the, from the water. Which causes the scale. That causes yeah. the scale mm -hmm. uh, when bound with the carbonate. Mm -hmm. And we give in exchange the same quantity of sodium. Okay. And that, in terms of machine quality, machine health, it works. It works. Okay. Then experimenting with different ions because we wanted to find something that was an alternative mm -hmm. to the to the sodium ion exchange. Uh, we tried uh, the lithium, we tried the potassium, we tried uh, other ions, and we, uh, by chance, we met the magnesium, mm -hmm. another uh, positive charged ion like mm -hmm. the calcium, like the sodium, but testing the coffee in very widespread coffee panels, mm -hmm. we uh, realized that changing only the water parameter, so leaving everything untouched, mm -hmm. pressure, uh, temperature, the coffee with the magnesium water was resulting absolutely better in mm -hmm. the mouth of everybody that, that, that was testing the coffee with more fruity flavor, with more flavory um, uh, yeah, coffee sips, uh -huh. and then we went into the chemistry of it. We okay. First, it was the coffee tasting that was resulting in a better result. Okay. Then we went into the the, the, the pure chemistry, and we then realized that it's probably the magne the magnetic radium of the of the uh, of the magnesium ion mm -hmm. that attract that can attract in a better way the acid that are inside the coffee. So I'm going to put it simply, it's a better extractor of yeah. the flavors where it's we like, want it's out like, of our it's coffee. Like, it's like the magnesium ion as a hook that uh -huh. catches the, the acid, the citric acid, mm -hmm. the malic acid that are inside our good coffees and bring them down in the cup in the form of good taste, good flavor. Okay. Yeah. Now, you may, now, folks may run into other ways of treating their water. One that you, know, you don't really want to use, and we talked a lot about this earlier, in an espresso machine is polyphosphates, which is very common, right? And why is that? Uh, poly <laughs> polyphosphates are a traditional way to treat the water, especially here in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, the other side of the pond in Europe, we don't, we don't use them that much. Okay. Uh, but here, probably, um, it, it's very widespread because the, before the espresso machine came to the States, uh, you always used to have especially filter coffee. Yeah. And filter coffee machines don't have tiny passages yeah, for the water. Tiny. What's the problem generated by poly polyphosphate? Polyphosphate inhibit, inhibit do they say inhibit? Mm -hmm. Inhibit the formation of the scale uh, with a covering the surfaces where the water passes through with a layer of polyphosphates them okay. themselves, uh, creating a, like a, um, a slicky surface um, that doesn't allow the scale to, to attach. attack, to attach to the metallic surface that mm -hmm. typically are inside the coffee machine. The problem is that when you use the polyphosphates in the coffee machine, in an in a espresso coffee machine, the typical espresso coffee machine has really tiny water yeah. passages like 0 0.5, half millimeter, and that polyphosphate can really block them uh, causing a machine breakdown. Breakdown. You don't yep. want that. Yeah. Um, you know, I know. And just you know, real quick, we we've had a couple of espresso machines come in that did use polyphosphate softening, and you open up a boiler, and we find this polyphosphate, we, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> snotty goo in the bottom of the boiler that does not look yep. appetizing. That's, appetizing that's, at all. I mean, that's the like, aspect. After a yeah. long time working with the polyphosphate, that's that the aspect down. of what you find inside. 
Now what we do like, so we, we do, we have a couple of the options here from BWT, some different ones. They all use the magnesium ion exchange, right? They all operate with the same principle. They all also have activated carbon within them to get rid of any chlorines, which is very important for taste. You don't want, you don't want the chlorination in your water when you're making coffee. First and very important, yes. in every system produced by BWT, there is always, you will always find active carbon because in our opinion, the coffee taste is affected very much the, by the presence of chlorine, by the mm -hmm. disinfectant used from the aqueduct to uh, keep the water safe from bacteria. This is the first task of the water filtration company. Keep away <laughs> the bad taste from the water. The water has to be safe without extra extra yeah. taste. Then afterward, we have to treat the hardness. If it's too high, we have to lower it. If it's too low, too, we have to increase it, it a little bit to bring it to a, uh, what in the SCA organization, organization, they call it the sweet spot for the, um, for We're the water get filtration. the best flavor generally yeah. out of it. So the options we have here, we have the Best Max Premium. This is a for plumbed in machines, although yes. I have seen people <coughs> put like a little auxiliary faucet at their sink to get water out of this immediately. That can um, be used for professional usage or even at home. At home, yeah. yeah. Um, especially key, if you have a dual boiler machine, please treat your water because they're so <laughs> incredibly difficult to descale. Um, usually you want a professional to do that for you. It's not something you want to do at home usually. Uh, then we have an option here. This is the best save. These are drop in machines with internal tank reservoir for so the water put it in, in the reservoir more appropriate if you can you know fill your machine at night and let it let the water sit in yeah. there so the filter can do its job then we have the penguin pitcher i use these pretty much in every machine i have here that isn't plumbed in um, it uses so it's a replaceable cartridge inside again uses a magnesium ion exchange magnesium and active and carbon for the chlorine very so it's a very complete uh, filtration system and very good for your drinking water quality at the table and uh, for the coffee machine as well. And then we have one other option here. We have the best cup. So this is, you can mount this in a reservoir and connect it to the water intake. In the reservoir, in those machines that yeah. uh, take the water from the reservoir using the silicone tube. Yes, so, and this is really nice. So this is immediate filtration. As, you know, if you're gonna use the reservoir pads, you know, you want a little residual time in the, in the reservoir yeah. to, mm -hmm. for it to do its job. Um, so a bunch of a bunch of different solutions. I know you go much further than that because like back here I've got the the best min here. This is if you have water that's actually too low in minerals, which yeah. can be a problem as well. Um, the because it uh, the water with very low um, um, mineral presence has a very low capacity in extracting the better part of the coffee. That's the taste. Yeah. Absolutely. So we have to remineralize it a little bit, and that is a solution. And of course, in, in order to know what you want to do, we're not going to do it here, but you also have the test kit where we can test total hardness and the yeah. carbonate hardness to determine scaling potential and to help you figure out which filter is going to be best for your situation. We do have another video on that that'll show you how to do the test and then we'll suggest solutions depending on your results. Yep, so. yeah, and, and it's an easy task. We've seen it, we've done it together after a couple of seconds you were doing it without my help. Yeah. Uh, it's just some drops to, 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 to use and, and, and you determine very easily uh, what's your hardness and what's your alkalinity. Hardness is the, um, the power that the water has to extract the, the acids, so the mm -hmm. good flavors, and the alkalinity is the, ca the capacity that the water has to buffer the, uh, the acidity itself. So the combination of the two brings us to decide uh, using even the SCA method, the SCA diagram, uh, it brings us to decide which system we can use inside the BWT range. All right, Sergio, thanks so much for giving us a little tour okay. of the products here and talking about the water quality, really appreciate it. Guys, thanks for watching. Do check out if you, you know, wanna test your water, I do have that other video, I'll link that down below so you can see that, to figure out what you need to do for your water, to, for the best flavor, of course, and to protect your equipment. Sergio, thanks again. I'm Mark from Whole Latte Love. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you back here soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.